Hi everyone. I hope you've all been having fun knitting away in your socks. Um, if you want to get the little segments of the pattern that I'm working on, just with the, really more of a recipe, just make sure you check out my blog just on carlfeller.com. I'll have all the details up there. Um, I am planning also on putting it all up on my teachable course so that it can all be kind of fit in together with the videos and the text as a little workshop. And at least for December, it's going to be completely free. So please do sign up um, while, while it's free for everyone as, as a workshop. Now, you should have finished your cast on, your if you're doing color work or any other pattern that you're introducing and you've reached the length of the cuff you want. So what we're gonna take a look at today is heels and how to turn a heel. In the pattern, I'm going to just work on a basic heel flap with a gusset. So that is the, uh, that's the technique that I'm going to be using. And that's what I'll detail in the pattern. However, I'm gonna show you and kind of work through with a few little sketches as well here on how you do a short row heel. So if you would like to introduce a short row heel, you can go right ahead. I'll give you just the basic outline and principles of it so that if you're happy enough doing some calculations, you should have enough information that you can convert um, a heel flap to a short row heel. So let's get started. Let's get started on an overview of different types of heel types now. To me, move these two out of the way here and start with this one first of all. This is going to be the type of heel that I'm using in my, my sock that I'm knitting, but don't feel confined by that. By all means, if you'd like to use a different type of heel that I'm showing in a minute here, just swap it out, take a look at, you know, investigate a little on, um, on sizings and how to work it, but you should definitely experiment and have fun with this. Now, this one is going to be a cuff down with the traditional heel flap. What that looks like here is, see here, these are, the stitches are going to be divided at this point. These are the heel stitches, so they're half stitches of the heel. And the other half over here is what's called the instep. And when you're working the heel, those instep stitches won't be worked. So if you've got a magic loop, they'll probably just sit on one side, or if you've got two circulars, they'll sit on one of the circulars. Or again, with double pointed needles, you could put them on one double pointed needle and use a couple of double pointed needles for this, or two and two, whichever is most comfortable for you. But basically the whole idea being that you're not working these uh, top of the foot or instep stitches, you're just working the heel stitches. These heel stitches will eventually become the bottom of the foot or the sole of the foot, but right now where they're just our heel stitches. I'm gonna stretch them out over here. So you've just got these stitches and now we're working them back and forth in rows. At the end, or rather at the start of each row, you're going to slip a stitch. And what that will do, will form a nice little column of slip stitches here and slip stitches here. And it also means that you're only going to have one stitch to pick up for every two rows. So it makes it very obvious what the ratio is. So if you work 40 rows, you're only going to have 20 slip stitches. So you'll be picking up the 20 stitches. So it's really obvious how to pick the stitches up and very straightforward. You can also see here that you've got this kind of a ridged pattern and that is worked by slipping every other row on the right side. And if I pull this inside out, you might be able to see what that creates is, see a thicker set of fabric where all of those slip stitch rows are going to be behind there. And it also compresses it a bit vertically to give you just a little bit more thickness and padding and durability across the heel. Because really, look, it's much thicker than the corresponding work on each side. When you get to the end of this heel here. It's usually given by the number of slip stitches or rows worked as you work down here. Then at that point, you're going to turn the heel. So you're going to go from all of these stitches to just this number of stitches. And you do that working back and forth in short rows to just as far as here, you do a decrease, you turn back, you do a decrease, you turn back. You just keep going back and forth decreasing before you end, reach the end of the row of stitches. And that turns your heel, that creates that very sharp heel turn. 
Now, if for some reason you want this wider here, you could just start with a little bit more stitches in between because you can see the shape it forms there. Then when you finish that, you're going to end up with this many stitches out along here. So less than the number of heel stitches we started with. What we do then is work across those, pick up all those stitches along the side, knit across your, or in this case, do the stitch pattern across the instep or the top of the foot. And then we come across here and pick up the other side of stitches. So you've joined in the round again, but this time you've got a lot more stitches because you've got all of these extra stitches here and here. But you don't quite have as much as you would have if you hadn't decreased that heel because instead of having this number of stitches, you've only got this number of stitches across here. So we're going to decrease down here so that by the time you're done, you have the same number of stitches there as you did for the heel across here. You can see on every other round, there's a decrease over here and a decrease over there that form this lovely tidy little decrease triangle coming down here. And that's where I was talking about if you realize that you wanted to have a slightly bigger foot or a smaller foot, you can either work more or less decreases here and here. Just make sure it matches up. And when you reach the end here, you also probably want to be aware, just keep an eye on the toe and make sure that the side of your toe is where you want it to be so that this matches up nicely with your heel as you're working along. So that's how you work your traditional heel. And I'm going to come through in a second and I'll, as I'm knitting through my heel, I'll show you each step along the way. Before I did that, I wanted to give you a little overview of our short row heel. This here is an itty bitty little corner, just the short row worked. So it's assuming that we've just got these heel stitches here. So you're coming down here and you're knitting your heel stitches. So that's the width of the stitches. And to create the short row heel, what you do is you work one stitch less each row as you come in till you reach the point that's going to be the width of your heel. And then at that point, you start working one row more. And that creates that little curve to go from vertical down this way to horizontal out this way. I'm going to just sketch that up on paper for you. So this is working from the cuff down. This is your all of your heel stitches. So what you're doing is on the first row, you go one stitch less, you do a short row. One stitch less, you do a short row and you start working back and forth like this. And unlike the traditional heel, you're not doing any decreases because all you're doing is short rows. So all your stitches are still there because you haven't worked any decreases. So not very straight lines, but you get the idea. So this is coming to the width of the heel. And then at that point, you're gonna start working one more and they start working back out again. So it's like a, a little pyramid sitting on top of a pyramid to a certain extent. And you keep going until you reach the full width of the heel. But something to bear in mind is that you look at that and you go, I don't get how that matches up. What you're seeing here is something flat, but in reality, these stitches and these stitches, because they're short rows, are going to be touching. So if you actually cut this out and folded it, you're going to end up getting the kind of shape that you've got here. In terms of the type of short row, you could in theory use any type of short rows for doing those turns. The, the method I like to use is the yarn over method. And the reason that's useful is because as you're working back out here, every time you come back, you've got one set of short rows sitting on top of the other. And with the yarn over method, that wrap is effectively sitting on top of your needle. And so it makes it really easy to work those double wraps together. So I think it simplifies the whole thing if you use the yarn over method. You don't have to, but it just, it's one of the cases where it's, it's a particularly useful method to use. This is also going to be similar for the toe, but I'll leave that for next week when we're looking at toes. So I'm going to clear this stuff up and pull my knitting out and I'll show you all the steps involved in doing your traditional heel flap now. I'm just getting ready to set up the heel of my sock now. This part here you can see is the uh, back, going to be the back of the sock because it's where it was cast on and you want 
all of that patterning stitch to be in the middle of the back. So to do that, it means that I'm going to knit a quarter of the stitches, which is 17 here. And then I'm going to turn around and knit 34. So there'll be 17 here and here. And then the front ones will be over here. So I've knit 17. I'm just about to get started here and uh, to knit over 34. And I'll show you kind of on my magic loop how I go about ranging, rearranging that. First of all, I'm going to pull these over here too, because eventually these are all going to be on the second side. So this will start the rearranging and I'm going to get started over here. You will notice that I, so I, so I can talk to you and won't have to, to worry too much about um, losing track of where I'm at. I've actually put a marker over on the other side where the other 17 ended. Because that's one of the awkward things about working on camera is that it's uh, you're trying to talk and explain what you're doing, but if you are attempting to count at the same time, it's a little bit of a disaster. <laughs> so I'm going to show you the setup and then I will show you the first couple of rows so that you see how it's worked. Now, what I'm going to do here is where that marker I put in for those 17 stitches is, I'm going to pull it out here, effectively rearranging things so that my heel stitches with the cast on at the very center are over on one side here. And this other side over here is where is going to be the instep. So those ones are going to stay right here. I won't be touching those. And I'm only going to be going back and forth on these 34 stitches along here for my heel. I'll pull that over. And you can see you can, you can keep using the magic loop with one needle like this if you so desire. Now, if you are using double pointed needles, what you're most likely to do is you'll just keep two double pointed needles going over here. And then you can leave the other two on that side there um, with nothing on them. You might also notice uh, when I've written this out, I've put it in and saying remove the marker. Because of course, I'm working on the assumption um, that you may be using something other than Magic Loop. With Magic Loop, I typically don't put a marker. And the reason I don't put a marker, of course, is because if you put a marker right where it turns, it's just going to keep coming off and the actual division of the two sides works as a pretty good divider in my opinion, really. So that is my two sides divided and I've got the 34 heel stitches that I want to work on now. So on the first row, we're going to do it where we've got um, slip one knit wise, then knit one, slip one purl wise, and keep on going like that until the last stitch when you have a knit one. So. First stitch is going to be slip one knit wise. You do that by going in as if you're going to knit, slipping it this way. Then I will knit one. Then the next one you slip a purl wise like this with the yarn in the back. So it'll strand across the back. Knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one. So you can see it becomes a nice little, and if you forget where you are, just look where the stranding is. Slip one, knit one, slip one, and you don't have to even um, pay attention to this very much once you've got a couple of rows set up because then you'll have very obvious slip stitch rows. And so it's going to, yeah, it'll kind of, it, it's like it, it sets up its own little markers for you. But first row or two, you need to pay a bit more attention because it's very easy to kind of get off the rhythm and end up accidentally forgetting what you're doing. As you have discovered I will happens very often when I'm talking. Go slip one and then the very last stitch is knit one and that's the end of our first right side row and we're going to keep working our right side rows like that. Turn around and the next row is the wrong side row and this one we're just going to slip one purl wise with the yarn um, in the front towards us and then purl to the end so you keep your yarn on this side slip one purl wise and then just start purling and that is all there is to it. So keep working through those two rows until you have the correct number of stitches for your size which you've got a couple of ways of doing it. You can either just count the rows or if you lose track of your rows <laughs> just count the slip stitches along the side which I find just as effective. So when we finish this come on back and I'll show you how we're going to go about turning our heel then. I've finished off the slip stitch heel flap for my sock now. 
And you can see very clearly here the columns of slip stitches because they really stand out because each one of these is the same as two rows. So if you have lost track of how far you've gotten with your slip stitch, you can count these columns. So I've been knitting across here, so I'm not going to count there, but I could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, hang on, I've missed one. I know there was 16 here. <laughs> here, I missed the first one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So there's 16 of these slip stitch columns. Now, if you were more careful than me and you were counting as you went along, you wouldn't need to check that. But I tend to knit these in front of the TV and relaxing. So I've got a very, very strong chance of missing some of those rows. Now we're going to turn the heel and that's going to happen bang smack in the middle here. So what we're going to do is I've knit 19 stitches and now I'm going to do a decrease, knit one more and turn around. So I've knit 19 and then the decrease is going to be a slip, slip and knit. So I slip one knit wise, slip one knit wise, put the left needle into the front of these here and knit those two together. Give it a nice snug because this can get very loose. And then you're going to knit one more stitch and then you turn your work. Now here on this side, we'll start with the slip one purl wise, which you probably remember from the full heel. Slip this stitch purl wise. Next, we're going to purl five. One, one, two, three, four, and five. Then we will purl two together. It'll snug up and purl one and then you're going to turn back again. Now the next time, what we're actually going to do is we're going to go and purl as far as our gap. And then you'll do the slip, slip and knit. You can see the gap very clearly here. So that stitch and the next one will be the slip, slip and knit. So I'll show you one here. First one is going to be slipped purl wise. And we're going to knit to one stitch before that gap. I'll show you what that means here. If you have a hard time seeing the gaps, you can always put a marker when you turn but I think it's pretty clear when you get there. So we're going to slip the stitch knitwise, slip the stitch knitwise, and knit those together, snug it up. And I find it very easy to forget this, but knit one at the end, snug it and turn around. Then we come back again and you're just going to keep doing the same thing back and forth. So you can see here, on this side, this is your gap. So would you purl two together, this and this, and then you purl this one and then you'll turn. And you'll keep doing that until all of the stitches are eaten up on each side. So the very, uh, the second last one you're doing, you'll have this one would be purl two together and purl one, and then you do one more. So you finished with the purl two together here and an SSK on this side together. So the very last one you do, you won't have the extra knit and purl on the final row. I'm going to finish off my heel here and then I'll show you how we pick up those stitches around the sides. I've now worked back and forth on the heel. Um, I, a while ago, I was telling you that you'd be going one beyond the end where you didn't have a single knit and purl. That's actually not the case for this size. It'll vary according to sizes, but for mine, I'd actually, the row I showed you is the way it's actually going to continue on. So you'll know yourself once you get to the number of stitches you're meant to have for your heel. But that's what it looks like, which I think looks really cool. So it's moved your stitches from going vertically this way to horizontally this way, and you've decreased down, in my case, to 20 stitches. And this is going to be our instep here. So you can probably see here what we've done is I've just worked across those. Then I'll pick up these stitches along the side here knit the instep and knit and pick up and knit the same number on this side. You're going to pick up and knit right down into each of these little slip stitches. Now my eyesight is not as great as it used to be so I'll show you the first couple but the rest I'm probably going to have to actually pull up and closer to my eyes so I can see more easily. And I'm also going to put a marker in here and here because that way you can decrease along here because I've pulled this out here and this, this sock here is finished and that's the bottom heel. This is where each of the stitches were picked up and these were the instep stitches. The top ones were these ones here. 
and you can see that that decrease just happens on the gusset side of the instep on each side here. So you'll have one along here and one along here. And there you can also see they're directional that this one is going to be in a two together to slant this way and this one will be a SSK to slant this way. Now I'll just very quickly show you the pick up here and then I'll finish it off off camera and I'll show you the first decrease round. So I'm just going to come in, this is where the yarn is here and I'm just going to pop into the first of my slip stitch columns. I'll go into both sides of the column here where the stitch was slipped, making it sometimes you can snag extra bits of yarn. So don't be afraid to pull them out if you need to. This is the first one. Again, there's a little bit snagged over. I'll just lift that over and then we'll move into the next one, making sure that you go through, ah, I'm gonna do this one again, but make sure you go through both loops of that slip stitch because otherwise you're going to end up with um, a heel gusset that's not going to be quite tight enough. I'm going to keep going down here. The last one here, you'll pick up one in that gap there, knit across here and do the same on the other side and then we'll do our decrease round. I've picked up the stitches down both sides of my heel now. So this is my heel stitches. Here are my picked up stitches. I've put a marker in here, but it's probably not really going to be needed because you can see I'm using magic loop. So this marker is going to come off, but I've left it there because if you're doing double pointed needles, then you're going to need to know where that is. Here are my instep ones. I will need my, um, my marker here before these ones. So what we're going to be doing is there'll be a decrease here on this side and on this side here till all of the heel or sole stitches match up with the same number here. So if you've adjusted the number of stitches you've got, you'll also need to adjust it so that some of those extra stitches are going to become part of the instep. So if you wanted to add four extra stitches for this, then you're going to have to make it so two of those heel stitches start moving over here to the instep so that you've got matching top and bottom. Because when you're finished, this marker here on the right side is going to become your start of the round because that makes it nice and easy when you get to the toe because you'll have decreases here and here to shape the toe. So if you've still got the same marker here, you know that everything's going to line up that one side of the instep is going to be straight on the same side of the toe of your foot. I'm gonna work one decrease round with you here now to show you what it looks like. Um, again, with Magic Loop, I just keep half my stitches on each side. You can move things around as necessary. It's uh, whatever is whatever's most comfortable. If you're doing um, double pointed needle, four needles with the fifth one working is going to be easiest, I think. So you can have your heels on one, your sa one side on the other, the instep on another, and the second side on a fourth, I would imagine, juggling them around as things decrease. What we're going to work now is I'm going to knit here all the way to three stitches before my marker. And in my case, three stitches before my marker is going to mean three stitches before the end of this side of the magic loop. And like before, we're going to, like on the heel, we're going to use directional decreases. So the first one is going to be and knit two together. And the one on the other side is going to be um, an SSK or a slip slip knit because that will mean that we end up with lovely matching lines moving in the same direction. I'm going to go slowly here to make sure I don't miss it. So I've knit the last three stitches. Again, you kind of want to be careful to tug beforehand to keep it nice and tight. Then I'm going to knit two together here, knit these two together. And knit one. So I finished this one. I'm going to, this is kind of done, it's this job now. I'm just going to take that marker off because of the fact that I have got that division there, so it's just not going to be needed. I will come back if I need it later on, if I move stitches around to put it back in. But as of right now, see sometimes here, they can end up snagging because as you're moving them around, they get really tight. So this time I'm going to knit all of my instep or top of foot stitches across to the marker. And it'll be afterwards we do the decrease. So this time it'll be, on the other side, it'll be knit one, um, and the SSK. The reason we've got the one knit one inside is that it creates 
show you here. See this nice line here? That's because there's the one knit and then the one decrease. It's a little bit more visible here because of the fact that you've got, um, because of the fact that you've got a pattern stitch on top, but it still, it still can be seen even with just plain old stock and stitch. And if you want to play around and add other stitch patterns in like with that, um, usually at this point, if you've had something all the way around on the cuff of the sock, it's going to be more usual to just have it on the top when you reach the foot, because you have to think about whether you want to walk and pattern stuff. Obviously with color work, you'd be doing it all around, but if you had introduced lace or something, or something textured, then at this point, it would just be on the top. But color work is a little different. And color work does mean that you're going to have a lovely cozy sock because it's going to be almost double layers. So I move that marker to knit one. And then the next one here is the slip slip knit. So slip one knit wise, slip one knit wise, put this into the front of the two stitches and knit it together. Again, tugging it up. And then I'm just going to knit to the end of the round. So what we're going to do now is that round is going to be repeated every other round. So in between, so the next round I do now is just going to be a plain knit. And then after that, I'll have my decrease round and then I'll have plain knit. I would suggest making a little chart together for yourself for this to just tick off as you as you work it because it's it's very, very easy to forget which you've worked as you're going through. And you're going to keep doing that till you're back down to the original number of stitches. Um, for this size, it's the smallest, so it'll be back down to 68 with equal number of stitches for the instep and for the heel. So if you've adjusted, just move things around. Once you finish that, then what you're going to do next is continue knitting your sock until the point from, if you try, keep trying it on, and the point from the heel here to the top of the toe should be the full length less around two inches. Or if you're knitting the biggest size, it would be two and a quarter inches. So if you've done the heel and you've got through that, just keep knitting, keep knitting till you've, re and you, when you try it on, that there's about two inches left before the toe. So this point here to here is going to be roughly around two inches. So I'm going to keep knitting on this and next week we'll take a look at toes. I'm gonna to show you the standard decrease toe that's done here. And I'll also show you what a short row toe looks like. It's pretty similar to the short row heel. So keep knitting. So you have seen the heel in action now. You've seen how we get started with those slip stitch uh, heel rows and how to slip the edges, then picking up the stitches and adjusting for any extra gaps that you have that you might want to correct. And eventually moving on to creating that gusset. And let me know, please, if you've decided that you want to use short rows instead and how you're going about doing it and how you find it and what short row technique you found best for this, because um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the whole thing. You can, of course, as well, at this point, mix and match patterns that you might have another pattern that has got the same number of stitch counts or is only a couple of difference. And you can just pull the heel from that and put it in. So you can kind of do a little bit of a, a Frankenstein sock, so to speak, because this is all about playing and having fun with your knitting and socks and making it your own. So this is definitely what this knit along is about. It's not following a pattern exactly. It's about playing with your work and just having a lot of fun with it. So now that you know the outline of the heel, go ahead and finish your heel and your gusset for next week. And at that point, you can also perhaps start working, you can kind of work a little bit on towards the, the leg as well, because you are not the leg, the foot, because the foot's going to be worked right up until you start decreases for the toe, or if you do short rows, until you start doing short rows for the toe. So if you work to within about two inches or so of the full length, um, if you have enough time. If you just get the heel flap done, it's fine. Come back next week and you can take a look at how the toe is working. But the toe is going to finish the whole thing off and then that should hopefully give you enough time to get started on your second sock so that you could get them completed for either yourself or for a gift for Christmas. <laughs>